going on guys? This is Joel, Muddy Crux Off-Road. Today we're talking about some things you need to know before buying a ZJ. This is my 1994 Jeep ZJ behind us in the beautiful sapphire blue, just for starters. If you watch the XJ video, I got the same problem. Pain issues. Thanks Chrysler. So just to start off, the ZJ is going to be just a little bit bigger than a W, than an XJ. It's going to be a little bit bigger than an XJ. So same four doors, four wheel drive, all that fun stuff. Um, this particular one um, is the Laredo package. So we've got the gray plastic or what used to be gray plastic all the way down the side of it. The Limited's come painted already. Uh, we're gonna do a shameless plug here. Money Crooks Off-Road. Shout out to Brandon of Mountain Vista Fab. So this Jeep, we're gonna start talking about some exterior stuff. The ZJs have a fuel door that is released by a little button that is right here. That's normally what you do. You have to pull that to release your fuel door on the early ZJs. The cable breaks um, and you have to take apart the whole interior to replace it. So I started off with just having the door on there that I had to kind of finesse a screw to hold it shut. Uh, this is a TJ bezel. It bolts up to your filler neck just fine. Whenever I get my armor put on, I'm going to actually put your screws in here and that'll actually kind of look factory. Um, I've got some 32 inch tires. Um, while we're back here, a Jeep ZJ has coil spring rear suspension versus a leaf spring. So what I did on my lift kit, I've got a four inch rough country uh, front springs and I took the front springs out of here and put them in the back. So that'll net you about four inches, a cheap way to do it. Um, I've, I've got some extended control arms and some extended shocks, but all in all, you could lift one of these for about 500 bucks, uh, four inches or so. Uh, so in the back here, um, we've got the little bit rounder body style versus the XJ. Uh, so the corners aren't so harsh. Rear window defroster, pretty standard. There is a recall on these if you haven't had it done yet if your jeep doesn't have a hitch on it you could take it to a jeep dealership they'll put a hitch on free of charge uh, it's supposed to help with rear end impacts and folding your gas tank up in the back this one's got a little bit more storage than a than an xj does um, i've got some standard off-road stuff i've got fluids jumper cables uh, i got a blanket a jack Miscellaneous crap back here, but Mountain Vista Fab makes cubby holes that replace your spare. Supposed to go here just like the ZJ was. Um, and then there's a cubby hole on this side that you can either put a speaker in or he makes some kind of cubby like lock boxes that are pretty cool. Uh, they come with these rubber strips that don't ever do anything. They only just come apart and cause problems. Here's one laying in the back just to show you. Uh, nothing fancy back here. You got uh, your standard tie down points. Uh, mine came with the cargo cover that still works. It's in my garage. I just don't have it in here. All right, walking around this side. Of course, we got our SpongeBob. This can't can't forget, can't forget SpongeBob. Got that on all our vehicles. Okay. Uh, back seat. It's pretty roomy. gray interior in this one. They come with leather interior and cloth. Um, your factory spare stuff or your jacks and stuff is normally under your seat. You just fold it up. Just, um, don't, don't look at my mess. Going to our front seat here. So I've got the Mountain Vista Far Dash Mountain Vista Far. Mountain Vista Fab dash handle and I've also got the Mountain Vista Fab cup holder fix. If you own a ZJ, you need to buy this, otherwise you don't have cup holders that work. So same kind of ideas as our last video. Uh, my Jeep has all the black trim, which I personally prefer over the wood grain. Uh, they come with wood grain in the limiteds. Um, everything is there in the center, uh, very easy to access. Let's go around to our driver's side where the magic happens. <laughs> It ain't a Jeep if it don't squeak, all right? So, same kind of setup. We've got our gauges, uh, fuel and voltmeter. We've got a tack, speedometer, 
oil pressure and coolant temperature. Make sure you keep an eye on that coolant temperature. This particular Jeep is an automatic. It's got a 231 transfer case, which I've got a Mountain Vista Fab shift linkage on. Now let's pop the hood and see what's going on under there. So motor options. Mine's got a four liter in it, 190 horsepower, 230 foot-pounds of torque, something like that. Um, you had an option of a 4.0, a 5.2, and in 1998, you could get a 5.9. That's the 5.9 limited that you hear everybody talk about. Couple big issues with, with these, uh, your PCB valve, you need to replace that as soon as you get it, otherwise you're gonna be burning oil like crazy. They sell all these breather lines, uh, these vacuum hoses here, they sell all that stuff on Rock Auto. It's really cheap, really easy to get. The battery tray on these really, really sucks. Okay, they're made out of plastic and they, they break from the battery bouncing around or you lose your uh, you lose your hold down because the bolt holes break. Mountain Vista Fab makes a real cool one of those. We got a video. We'll leave a link in the description to that if you haven't seen it yet. Um, valve cover gaskets always leak. And we got our standard uh, 4.0 tick. That's that's pretty standard on these. A big thing on the ZJ that we want to talk about though is our searing pump, okay? This pump is off of a WJ. So it's got a metal power steering pulley instead of a plastic one. If that hasn't been replaced on your Jeep, you're gonna to want to do that. The plastic ones break, you lose your belt, you lose your water pump, you overheat. And then the issue that plagues all four liter Jeeps, cooling. This one in specific, I've got a new fan clutch. I put a new 180 thermostat in it. I'm in South Texas, so it doesn't really get cold here. Um, if you're up north, you're gonna wanna stay with the factory temp so that everything can get into the closed loop and you have heat in the winter time like you're supposed to. Uh, new fan clutch, newer radiator, and the damn thing still gets hot. Uh, so mine in specific only gets hot when I have the AC on It's a hundred some degrees outside and I get stopped in traffic. So um, In a future video, we're gonna put some hood vents on um, So make sure you have notifications turned on so you get Information about that whenever we publish it Now that you know my Jeep, we're gonna talk about some Jeep problems. So see this dent right here? That's there because sometimes when you pull on this, see how it doesn't open? Yeah. And then it opens, it's magic. So the way to avoid that is you spray whatever kind of lubricant you've got, PB Blaster, WD-40, white lithium grease, up in there and cycle it 40 times or so. And then that doesn't happen anymore. So this Jeep is also from the Midwest. You know where we're going with this, don't you? Rust. So I've got some there, but where they're really bad about rusting at is down here in the fender wells. And then Same deal here. And if I was to remove this cover, which I don't think I'm gonna be able to do, there is no rocker panel up in there. there there's none. So they rest along the rockers. The ZJs came 
undercoated from the factory, unlike the XJs did. So that kind of saves the floor a little bit. Um, a lot of people have problems with your upper shock bolts. Let's show you the other side because you can actually see it. Your upper shock bolt right here. So if you're gonna do a lift kit or anything like that, make sure you grease the piss out of that. So like I said, this one's got a front to rear spring swap. Got rough country springs up here. I wouldn't go rough country again. They're awfully rough. And then we've got some upgrades. The double shear track bar that I talked about in our last video. That's what it looks like. It's a drop bracket with uh, eyelets on each side to put bolts through. That's a stronger setup uh, to upgrade from. All these Jeeps have really bad steering issues. So I put a Mountain Vista Fab steering box brace on there. That helped a lot there. The paint sucks. The cooling system sucks. So what do you want to do for a, a cheap, reliable beater Jeep? And once again, guys, I just want to say thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, subscribe, hit the bell. You know the drill. You're probably tired of me saying it. Hit the bell so you know when the next videos are coming out. Got some more ZJ parts being installed. We're going to start working on the XJ a little bit here. I've got a JKU video coming up. If you don't hit the bell, you're not going to know. Like the video. Comment down below what you like, what you think I should have put in the video. We'll see you next time.